Thank you so much. So I'm going to show you a shocking video. Eventually nobody gets hurt, but it's a really close call, and if you're sensitive, uh, better don't watch. So we see the school bus here that drops off a couple of kids. They get off the bus, chat a little bit, and then eventually some of them decide to cross the road. And obviously this is insanely close call, and I've watched this video many, many times, and I still am shocked uh, to see it. Let's take a closer look, and we actually realize how close that really is, because fortunately the guy runs away from the truck. If he had continued straight, the truck would have run him over. So fortunately, he had a lot of guardian angels that protected him really well. But is there something we could help him with as humans, with superpowers? And apparently the problem is that the truck driver of that oncoming truck doesn't see the kids behind the bus. So what can we do? For me, that's a call uh, for something I call ubiquitous perception, the ability to see beyond the line of sight. Let's take a look how this could actually work. Definitely the kids are behind the bus and we see the truck, but the truck has available the surface here, which is in its direct line of sight. And that gives the truck or a system on it the chance to really sense the kids behind the bus. And actually, we built a system that allows uh, to solve that situation. What we see here is a camera system on the right that has a laser that scans the wall. We have a computer screen that displays what the camera sees. And we have that black curtain which we can see behind. And a computer screen shows a white four here, right? So. If we take a look, what's behind the curtain, it's actually white four. So how does that camera see that? It's actually based on the fact that we have a pulsed laser. So it sends a very short light pulse towards the wall. Light scatters everywhere, hits the other objects in the room. And then after many reflections, light returns back to the system. And this image is displayed. That sounds a little bit confusing. So let's um, take a closer look. Light pulse hits the wall, then there is a sphere of light emerging from that point. It travels through space, hits the curtain, also hits the floor. And from everywhere on the floor, we get a reflection back to the wall, but let's just focus on this spot in the top left. There is a second sphere of light that travels back to the wall. And eventually, after a third reflection, there is some light that returns to the camera. And Let's just take a look first um, how we deal with motion. So actually, the person moves in front of a camera, and we are able to reconstruct it live and do instantaneous imaging. And in order to do that, we need to capture light at insanely high time resolution, and we need to unscramble all the reflections from all the objects which are in the room. Um, now that we are in this unique position for the first time, that we are able to image motion around a corner. Let's see how we can tie that back to the bus situation. And actually, it turns out that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So we have a vision system that is highlighted in green here. We have something that we want to image, in, in this case, uh, people. Um, and the direct line of sight is blocked by something that is highlighted in yellow here. So the black curtain on the left and the bus on the right. But in both situations, actually, we have a visible surface that we can use to bounce light off. Let's move on. Like What we need to do is actually image insanely fast. And for that, we are building uh, on top of what giants have built in the, f in the past. And especially MIT has a very long history of making super fast phenomena visible. In 1964, we saw that bullying passing through an apple. And in 2012, Ramesh Raskar, who is a professor at MIT, and his team made traveling light visible. Let's take a look at that. So this is actually a laser pulse which travels through a Coke bottle. And uh, when I saw that video for the first time, I was blown away because I thought light travels so fast, you would never have a chance to actually image that. But it turns out that this is possible. and. What I am particularly excited about is the fact that not only this gives us a chance to um, capture awesome videos, 
But there is also a practical use case behind that. Even back then, Ramesh Raskar and his team, um, for example, Andreas Welton, who was a postdoc with him back then, already came up with the idea to see around corners. And the setup was pretty similar. We have a camera system on the left, a surface that we bounce off the light on the right. We want to image that mannequin, and there is a white patch in between the camera and the mannequin. And back then, the reconstructions looked great, but the downside is that the reconstruction volume is pretty small. It's just that mannequin, so it's a space of, say, a foot cubed. And the reconstruction time, the calculation was on the order of hours, and even the data capture was on the order of hours as well. So back then, it was pretty uncertain where this technology would go. Super exciting, but where are we now? Actually, in 2015, DARPA came up with a program called Reveal, and they funded with $30 million dozens of researchers all over the country to come up with different principles to see around corners and advance the technology. And that helped us a great deal. People like Professor Raskar and Professor Welton, now at the University of Wisconsin, have matured this technology. And there are five key parameters I want to show. The first one is acquisition speed. The second one is calculation speed. Then we have scene complexity, so just a mannequin or even a larger scene with many objects in it. Um, scene volume is an issue that needed to be solved and relay wall complexity. So that means the properties of the surface we bounce the light off. Is it curved? Is it flat? Etc. And when we started, this technology was contained to the lab. In the last couple of years, a lot of progress has been made. And now we are further out on all these five axes. And this technology um, is ready to be built into a device of a form factor, say like this big, 20 by 20 by 20 centimeters. Um, and also at an affordable price point in the future. What can we do with that? Um, this is an example from a traffic scenario. I guess all of you guys know that situation well. You're driving down the road and there is a truck, there is a bus, there's buildings to the side and you can't really see the cross traffic. And I would be super happy to have ubiquitous perception available that tells me that there's actually a red light runner which crosses my path, so I can continue safely. Drones, they are limited by their perception, by their uh, situational awareness. And if they can see more, if they can sense what's around the corner, then we are able to make them fly faster and fulfill their missions uh, sooner. So in this case, we can see these boxes and adjust our flight path such that we pass through them, sorry, pass between them, and then continue our flight safely. This is another example, I guess you know which movie I'm talking about. And back then it was only the bad guys uh, who died, but we want to keep everybody safe. So we think back of ubiquitous perception, um, make use of the surfaces that are visible to us, and then we can determine a safe flight path and, and continue. This is obviously science fiction. This is in space, but it's not science fiction this time. Um, this is actually a study that has been made if it was possible to have a ubiquitous perception system placed on a satellite, and the idea is to shoot lasers into these holes on the moon, and it turns out there's caves underneath the surface. So with ubiquitous perception, we can map these um, caves in 3D and can actually figure out if they are suitable for moon bases at some point in the future. I'm sure you guys can come up with many, many more ideas what to do with this exciting technology. It's ready. Please get involved. Let us know what you think and what we should do. These are very exciting times. Remember, don't limit yourself to what you can see. Thank you. <laughs>